When Mark and I started to collect Judaica, um, it, was, it was really part of our own personal Jewish growth. As we became uh, more involved in Jewish life, as we became personally uh, more observant, uh, we were married in 1949. Uh, in 1959, uh, we had an opportunity to go to Israel uh, through our, uh, what was then the UJA. And on a back wall of a very tiny Tel Aviv jewelry shop, we saw a menorah, which was old, this Hanukkah menorah. And we could just imagine that somebody had, had brought it from Europe. Maybe they had hidden it. Maybe they had given it to someone to keep. We never knew. But we realized that this is a story, it was part of our story, and it was a story that needed to be preserved, and it was a story, and cared for, and it was a story that needed to be perpetuated. So the fact that these objects reflected different cultures, Jewishly, uh, became very important to us. We felt an obligation to the community to open our home to people who would like to tour this collection and to hear about it. And we discovered that we were becoming educators. So here is a Torah crown that is Italian. Now inside this Torah crown is a handle, but also it was a place where this would be placed on the Torah, and then the staves, the wooden part of the Torah, would be coming up on either side, and rimonim would be put on top of that. Why? Because they're Italian. And the more they could do, and the more they could uh, 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 add to this experience, they did. These, this is from the Yaminis, and this piece is an etrog box with these garnets all on it and with, uh, with palm fronds because it was used in the sukkah and in places like in Israel as well as in California, we have palm trees. So they would have palm fronds on the top of the, of the sukkah. And, um, and these Kiddush cups were to be used during Sukkot, and this was to hold the etrog. Uh, this is a uh, sort of a bittersweet moment uh, when we begin to, to give this collection, which my husband Mark and I lovingly collected together for over 35 years. Um, sadly, Mark died last year, but we had made this decision that we wanted to give this collection to the Magnus, a, a, a wonderful institution and one that we were happy about uh, in, in great part because some of these pieces will serve as uh, teaching tools through the university and that was very appealing to us. The feeling of, of excitement and seeing them raised to a different level of something that, that was once very personal and now it has become part of the public was, was something very exciting and rewarding, rewarding. And, and it, it felt good. It's very easy to, it's very immediate to realize from Peachy how every object in her collection has a story. And it's not only the story of the you know, big history with a, with a capital H. It's really the story of how the object was found, collected, and cherished, and what it meant to collect it for her at a specific time. This gift is extremely significant for us. It's significant on various levels. First of all, the Magnus is a collecting institution, so to show uh, how a major private collector decides to give part of their lifetime ende endeavor to, to, to us is uh, in itself a wonderful signal to both ourselves and the community of what we are here to do. We're here not only to preserve the past, but to 
increase our holdings of uh, historical documents. Um, the other reason why this uh, gift is particularly important is that this is probably the largest gift made, single gift, made to the Magnus of ritual objects since its founding in 1962. Interestingly enough, in 1967-68, another private collection from Southern California was acquired, but it was purchased. Mark and Peach collected hundreds and hundreds of objects from all over the world, mainly Europe, North Africa, the Middle East, uh, Palestine before Israel was established, and Israel after 1948. There are objects of all sizes, some are manuscripts, but mostly are really three-dimensional objects uh, used in rituals across the world. Um, it's really wonderful that uh, this couple decided and that Peachy Levy uh, finalized the decision to donate over 350 objects uh, from their holdings to the Magnus. And it would be very interesting to see in the years to come how the addition of the Peachy and Mark Levy family Judaica collection will increase our offerings, both in terms of exhibitions and of teaching and research at UC Berkeley. As we were planning the launch of a new exhibition season that focuses very much on the Jewish Bible uh, and on biblical stories told through objects, uh, we felt that it was a natural fit to invite Peachy Levy to join us and travel from Santa Monica to Berkeley and meet our community, our students, our faculty, uh, people in Berkeley and the Bay Area who follow the Magnus. And uh, the expectation was to have her really uh, jump into the crowd and be uh, one of us, part of what we do every day. So her knowledge and history on collecting biblical objects was a perfect fit. I think the most important piece, and what Peachy has said herself, is that the Magnus is a living museum, it's an archive, it's a research center, and the Magnus interacts with students on campus and departments, and that what the Levy's really liked about that is that students will be engaged with the objects they're donating, and they'll learn from it. The objects from India have certain elements that look Indian, the ones from Morocco look Moroccan, the one from Eastern Europe look Eastern European, and that sort of shows how Jews lived in different countries, but also lived in sort of community with the people around them. Considering that there are, are, are so, uh, there are Jewish museums in LA and so many other uh, worthy institutions that could have had this uh, this wonderful collection, it's a real treat that it's at the Magnus. It's a thrill that this is something that's going to be part of, uh, of the East Bay Jewish community for forever.